Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me in another of my wonderful interviews. Today we're going to try and understand trauma and how it affects us, how energy, strange energy, I don't know, entities can enter into us and how that can affect our behaviour. Um, some mornings, only yesterday, I was feeling quite low myself and the thing that dawned on me it wasn't, wasn't enough sunshine. I hadn't had those uh, vitamin D. Um, this morning, beautiful sunshine, spent a couple of hours in it trying to do some research for other interviews coming up and I felt so much better. But I want to find out about how, not only uh, how our moods can change, but how we perhaps react when trauma hits us and it sends us down a direction that perhaps we never thought of. So today my guest is hypnotist uh, Tomas Muller, who joins me, I think, up in Scotland. Hello, Tomas. Hello, hello. It's lovely to have you on the show. Thank you for coming along. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, um, just a slight correction. A uh, hypnotherapist is uh, taking it a bit too far. I use a technique which is called soul center healing, which uses basically the theta brainwave state to help us get into a state of relaxation. So just right. that was my um, uh, mistake that I haven't made that clear enough at the beginning. But thank you for that. No, no, that's perfectly all right. Um, and I know that these sort of theta and beta states are things that people do pass into when they're being directed through hypnosis. So it's, um, it is a similar thing. So, um, yeah, now we had a quick chat before we got going so we could frame how we're going to do the interview today. And um, you talked about the importance of energy forms that can enter our system. Yeah. Could you explain explain what that means and, and, and how they do that and what the result is if they do that? Okay, um, let me just sort of lay a little bit of a foundation of where I'm coming from as we dive into the topic. Brilliant. So, I guess most of us agree by now that the entire universe is basically a field of energy and frequencies and this field of energy and frequency can express itself in various different shapes and forms. So we have our physical body, some call it the meat suit, I like to describe oh, yeah. yes. it, the physical body, and which is made out of a construct of the five elements. In fact, everything in creation is made out of space, air, fire, water and earth. And those elements form the dense physical realities of our existence. So when we talk about um, looking at how trauma, how certain events in our life can affect our well-being, then I would like to just explain briefly where I come from. I look at a human being from the perspective of the dense physical body, but then we have the emotional layer the energetic body, the mental body, and also the spiritual or awareness body. So whenever there is a manifestation of a disease of an imbalance within the physical body, it most likely has got its origin in one of the subtler bodies. Now, right. we can, um, although I don't want to restrict it too much, we can look at it through the lens of the seven chakras or the seven energy systems. So as we know, the root, the base has to do with our fear center. And then the second sacred energy center has to do, for example, with our joy, with our pleasure, with our creativity as such. Now, the way we are constructed is that in essence, we can understand our entire construct, the human construct, as an expression of those energetic centers that manifest themselves in various colors. So we have got the color red for the root center, and then we have, for example, the color indigo for the um, center in between the eyebrows, all right? And then the color... Um, magenta or white when it comes to the crown center. So 
these are all the different energy centers and the colors, the full color spectrum. So what happens is that let's take an example, a young child or let's say a teenager, for example, has experienced, and I'm just bringing this up because a friend of mine um, is actually going through this situation at this moment in time. So let's say, for example, you are a teenage girl or a teenage boy, and then all of a sudden you lose a loved one. You, you lose one of your parents. Right. And that definitely can rattle the cage. It does affect your root center. It does affect your basic sense of security, which can bring an emotion of fear, for example. If mm. you look at the entire spectrum of emotions, we look at uh, positive or negative polarized emotions, positive emotions, joy, um, gratitude, love, and all of those emotions. But then we have got the so-called negative polarized emotions, which can be fear, anxiety, grief, worry, anger, all of those. So in the example that I just brought, what is happening is that because of this traumatic event of a child or a teenager, for example, losing its parents, it creates an imbalance in the root center, feeling secure, feeling mm. where is my sense of home? Where do I belong to at this moment in time? And then the original color of the vibrant red color, which is reflected in the root center, becomes distorted. Okay, so what will happen is that in that process, where we go through this traumatic event, our color spectrum changes and it's almost it becomes like a tainting of that color red as I brought up the example of the root center at this moment in time. So right. painting of the color red within the root center, what does that mean? Mm. That's the big question. It means that we are somehow losing balance within that center. And at that moment in time, when the discoloration happens, we become susceptible we become vulnerable to energy parasites that we can call them also energy parasites to actually tap into that root center. I don't know. That, am I making sense so far? So well, let me just recap just so that I've got it in my head what you what you're talking about. Um, so they so you're a, a, a you know some form of trauma as you say your parents are taken away from you and you're a young age your world must implode really because you're not expecting that and you don't necessarily know how to deal with it you've got all sorts of then people coming in and and dealing with you and your world is turned upside down and and as a result of that you're probably going through a huge gamut of different emotions yeah. um uh, and many of those fearful emotions or negative emotions as you said um because there could be all sorts of reasons why those parents have disappeared, which we didn't, we don't need to go into. But you know, it's put you on a path which is making you vulnerable through your root center, which, as you explain, with all the different colors. And so then, <clears throat> these other entities, parasite entities, and, and it'd be interesting to know what they consist of or where they come from. They they get enmeshed into you and presumably start to influence you exactly. in some way. Exactly. So how can that pan out? Because of that shock situation at this particular moment um, when the loss actually took place, yeah, it's we create an opening for these energetic parasites to come in. I'm talking about this in a minute. So mm. just bear with me for a second. Sure. They come in and they rob us from our sense of security at that moment in time. So what, that, what does this do? Naturally, mm. because there is an impairment in the root center, let's say an impairment or a discoloration or a tainting of the original color um, red, I'm just bringing the colors in 
because our whole spectrum of experiences is within the entire range of the colors, the range right. of colors that are actually there. So if we think about the root, because of that tainting of that color, we become susceptible of those energies actually infiltrating us. And what can that do to our behavior? We no longer have that sense of security, that mm. sense of stability, that sense of home, in a sense, that is being taken away from, something else comes in. So we are deprived of the original um, energetic signature that the root center naturally has. We are deprived of the original color red in its brightest, purest form. Now, this behavior or this situation leads to a certain behavior. Naturally, we are then going and we are trying to make other people feel unsafe, unsecure, unstable. That means we project out a sense of fear. They are, you know, um, Richard, you probably have had people in your life where you feel like you go away and they make you constantly afraid of everything and anything. You don't really know. You feel completely fine. You have a conversation and then you go away all of a sudden. Oh, my gosh, I'm really starting to feel anxious now. Where is that coming from? Right. So this could be I'm not saying it's always the case. This is just an analogy of explaining the mechanism behind entities and, and and energetic parasites so what then will happen is that person who has experienced that trauma because it feels there's an instability within the root center our behavior changes so that we go and create fear amongst the people around us so we actually make up for the lack of that stability security within our root center so this is just giving one example and um, presumably then that once you do that you you're affecting other people and and it's like a big snowball effect that more and more people become affected until perhaps the waves of this um peter out exactly exactly so you asked briefly the question of what could be those energetic parasites yes um, there are energetic forces that govern and you know much better than I with all your work that you have done through your entire channel for so many years that we are being ruled and governed by forces that may not have the best interest in mind. Let's put it that way. Right. Very gently uh, spoken. So those darker forces they look for any opportunity to start to rule us to start to make us feel insecure to break our light okay? yes and those energies can be in the form of demonic energies and there's an entire spectrum of it i'm not going to go into this but it could also be spirits earthbound spirits so lost souls that basically have left their physical body all of a sudden and um, as an example a sudden death that has uh, caused them to leave their physical body they don't realize that they are death they find an object where they attach themselves to because they don't realize that they are actually gone right this is and so it's, it's easier for them to attach them to somebody who's going through trauma because it's kind of like there's a little a tear in the normal fabric as it were and they can get in is that is that what you mean it's the tear in the auric field and very often it is exactly what those people have gone through in their life before they passed on let's yeah. say through an accident that they find the person where they can continue the pattern where they continue the theme of their life the life theme for example of addictions let's talk about the frequencies of the second energy center, for example, addictive behavior. So they attach themselves to a person that has got a weak sacral chakra because they want to continue live this addiction to another person. And this is how people can change 
their personality from one day to the other. And we don't really know what's happening, you know, because of that traumatic <clears throat> event, opening up the auric field for those frequencies to come in. So it's not just that if you have a traumatic experience, you're naturally going to feel shocked or your emotions are maybe dwelling on the negative. It's not. It's more than just that simple, or what would appear to be simple, uh, reaction to something. I mean, if you, you know, if I was a young chap and my parents were taken away in a car accident, let's say, and I was sort of shocked. You, you know, most people, if they weren't thinking in terms of the energy fields and and more esoteric stuff, would just think, oh, well, you're obviously ha you're on a downer because. <laughs> because your parents have had this accident and it's you don't worry you'll get over it but you're saying it's more than it's more than just your simple emotions exactly because the shock will stay in the system unless you deal with it and this is where the work the shadow work what we call looking at those patterns looking at those behavioral structures that are deeply ingrained within us and finding the origin mm. And you can imagine or you are very well aware of the fact we have a responsibility to ourselves to become a better version to ourselves. I believe that it is right. our responsibility to constantly find ways of improving ourselves, to dig into the shadow aspects of our behaviors and clear them, finding an understanding of why do we behave in certain situations in an awkward way. Where is that coming from? So we can bring in more light into our physical existence and into our subtle beings. Because those darker energies, they suppress our light. Because yes. As soon as there is light, they lose control. Light is, um, the, the shadow has to disappear as soon as there is light. So that's why they suppress us through the media, through all the construct that actually goes on around us. Does that make sense, Richard? Yeah, I'm just wearing, um, <clears throat> wondering what, um, and I'm just trying to work out how to vocalise this. Uh, we, we go through, say, an ordinary day with things that annoy us. You know, you drop a glass just as you'd filled it up with your favourite drink and you've accidentally dropped it. And so you're, you're annoyed and frustrated on a sort of minor level. And then you've got the instances that you're talking about where it's it's a major issue. On that sort of anywhere between the, the minor thing of dropping a glass or whatever um, or locking yourself out of the house and it's, oh, bloody hell, that's a bloody frustration thing. Whatever it is, there's obviously degrees of that. Are these energies that are coming into us operating on any of those lower forms or is it just on that sort of much more major big trauma? No, it is very, very well. Thank you for bringing this up. It does also work on a lower energetic, like on a, a much smaller scale. OK, um, what happens there is it is a matter of repetition. Just imagine you have got um, I can't find and just imagine you have a piece of wood. OK, and you yes. take a nail and you start to scratch a nail into this piece of wood. So yes. a traumatic event would be as if you scratch a nail into the wood. It is much more permanent. It is much more deep. But you could draw a line in the ground. You could draw a line in the sand, for example. So those minor events, if you keep repeating and are in a situation where you don't become aware of how those emotions affect you yes and cause a deeper scar on a long-term basis so in other words if you're i mean if you if you just have a bad day where everything seems to go wrong you know you start if you've dropped your glass you get in the car all the lights are red you're late now and eventually it ends up well maybe it doesn't end up with anything traumatic but you've had this build up of frustration and you end up at work and then somebody comes in and says the wrong thing and you snap at them and and so on and everyone goes what's the matter with you you got out the wrong side of bed and as a result of that and and say let that kind of thing is happening that's obviously going to affect you over a longer period than a big trauma in one yeah. day yeah, basically what happens there is that at that moment in time, you just drop your frequency 
drop your energetic field. It's like you're dimming your light in essence. Yes. But that's the reality of life. This is where the learning is. Yes. In. And this Presum is pre sorry, so presumably you can control to a certain degree how you react to dropping a glass and the red lights and someone saying, you know, the wrong comment or whatever it is, because that's within your control. But a big trauma sucks that immediate, oh, I said, no, I'll just still be happy because you wouldn't choose to suddenly be happy if you suddenly witnessed, you know, your parent being run over by a bus or something. Uh, it would be such a shock and, and unexpected. Yes. So, so that's where that wrench presumably is much bigger and these entities can slip in. Yeah. And I mean, if you look at it from a constitutional perspective, there are different personality types and different constitutions. So my main training is Ayurveda, traditional Indian medicine, and has been for over 35 something years. That's my main vocation. And I got in my professional career at a point where I felt I have done everything I can. People have learned to meditate. I've helped changing their diet, um, detox programs. Why is it that still people find it difficult to get rid of their addictive behavior? Where is this? And it is only when I discovered these energetic parasites that can actually siphon off our energy and push us into a, into a way of when we even have a minor incidence during the day, each time we are just snapping, we become really angry, aggressive. So that could also be because of um, ancestral patterns that we carry. And this is where it becomes really interesting. This is not stuff that we just carry from this lifetime, but we also carried it from past lives. We look at um, ancestral addictive behavior that is being passed down from one person to the other. Right. We don't really understand why, even though I might live the most healthiest in quotation mark lifestyle but then something happens and i become addicted to alcohol and that could be because there is an um, ancestral line that has to deal with addiction and this right. is where our the the beauty of this lifetime is we get the opportunity to clear those ancestral patterns right so we do not carry that on into the next generation. And in addition to that, imagine, um, Richard, what is happening if we are all able to are so much aware that whenever things come to us, that we deal in a way that is actually humane, we would have a much better world. Those yes. negative <clears throat> entities, those denser energies will not have the control on us and being able to to um, push us around like puppets, you know? Yes. So um, we'll, we'll talk about how you get rid of these entities or you clear yourself in a, in a second. So I'm just thinking when you talked about the being addictive or the, the behaviour that you change into, and, and I'm sure most people would be able to um, uh, empathise with the fact that sometimes you do you do things and you go... But that's just not me. I, why did I do that? Why did I say that? Why did I do that? Because that's not, you know, that's not how I want to be seen by others. I and, and why did I? I don't normally do that, and yet we do do, you know, we do do stupid things that you go, oh, I'm I'm embarrassed that I did that. That you reacted in a way, you said that snide remark, or you took an extra drink when you know you know you shouldn't be, or all of that. So is that that's what the these entities are working on you and changing your behavior. Absolutely. That's exactly the point you have just, right. just uh, really summarized it perfectly well. So this is what actually happens. It's something else is taking over without our awareness. And we kind of think it's us, but when, we, but the, when that moment is over, we're sort of going as if, you know, as if it was a puppet. Yeah. making or other as if we'd become a puppet and said these things that we wouldn't not so I, I, you know why did i do that so how do we deal with it how do we get how do we attack this so that it doesn't happen and we've got more control i mean there are various ways of how you can <clears throat> manage to 
to handle this, one of the things is to really ensure that your energy field is clear as much as possible, clear the space where you are in. And there are different practices. People use sage, they use frankincense. But the deeper stuff, if you want to go into the ancestral patterns, you look at past life. And this is where my work comes in. Um, an aspect of my work is actually talking to those demonic, negative, parasitic energies and allowing them to realize that in essence they have no place within the being that actually is being sort of infiltrated and their behavior has changed and make them realize it's basically a hostage situation where I communicate with them and ask them to leave and right. they are very very some of those high ranking demonic energies are very very sneaky and it's very challenging to actually let them um, or, or just to help them move on for them to realize that actually they in essence are that spark of light but the light has been dimmed they cannot exist without that spark of light and what do they go they attach themselves to other beings sapping off that energy and feed off that energy so because, for example, let's take the example of somebody who is very, um, let's say a bully, okay? Mm. Bully, sacral chakra, sorry, solar plexus chakra, taking someone else's power away. So they may have been bullied in their younger times, in their early um, adulthood, for example, or at school, and they become the abuser themselves so the abused becomes the abuser and they need that kind of quick fix to just bully someone else because they need to feed those parasites they need to be nourished and fed and then we might be able to control it over a period of time we may say okay my mind is so strong i can't handle without my addictive behavior i can manage and then something happens like you just trip yourself over energetically and then you're back in the addictive behavior because those parasites haven't left. So in that situation, and this is specifically when we deal with um, behavioral um, negative thought patterns, when we de uh, deal with uh, sugar addictions, alcohol addictions, sexual addictions, and sometimes we don't really feel that there is an addictive behavior. So then you need to go deeper. Then, of course, just waving, and please, I'm not mocking anything here, but waving a sage stick will not do the trick, okay? Right. <clears throat> yeah. have to look at how do you go into the subconscious mind? How do you get that person into a relaxed space of being where we can understand where are those patterns coming from? Could it be? because of a traumatic event within the womb that already set the scene for the child to right. um, uh, to sort of um, experience certain behaviors at a certain age in their life. And that's where the hypnosis comes in. That's where um, there are being meditative techniques, um, visualization practices are being used to get the person into a theta brainwave state where you communicate with that subconscious of that person to understand where does that behavior come in. And then very often people have flashes of past lives where they then all of a sudden realize, oh my gosh, actually, this is not from this lifetime. I have carried this pattern of allowing myself to be sexually abused, for example, for generations, for right. many, many lifetimes, bringing in that awareness and then figuring out where in the physical body is that trauma located, okay? In a physical body, in a sense, where within our field do we have that trauma? What kind of trauma is it? In what kind of way does this energy represent? What kind of demonic energy is it? And um, is it just, in quotation mark, a spirit that got lost and attached themselves 
and continues living through us their addictive behavior. So this is where the nuances come in. And then it's about negotiating and understanding, okay, finding a way of communicating to those entities in a way that they realize in essence they are that light. They don't need to go and sap off the light because they are beings. Mm. Any kind of existence within this reality has a spark of essence, of light, of source energy within them, but we have forgotten about it. So how do we reconnect to that spark of light? And that then um, leads to an awareness and understanding where you can use a certain technique to move those energies on, to just lift off, letting go of this physical being. And um, Richard, I have seen people completely changing their personality within a session. As wow. soon as you start talking to those energies, they become very abusive, very angry. Their voice changes, their eyes, their facial expression changes. Then you know that those beings, they do not like to be caught out because they feel quite happy to sort of being a parasite, yes. dimming, dimming the light of that person for such a long time. They don't like to be released and sent back off into the light unless they you find a way of making them understand that they themselves are hostages of the darker forces. That makes and that must be quite dangerous for you, I should think, if you're in the middle of a session and they've got extremely angry and then, you know, they've... I don't, I don't see it as dangerous at all. I make sure that I do my own protective field and that I'm quite clear. And when you are doing those this work, it's important for you to raise your frequency, raise your vibration right. as much as possible. So because with higher vibrational frequencies, they have no way of how they can attach. So oh, okay. I was, I was thinking, I mean, I was thinking if you're dealing with somebody who you would perhaps uh, throw the slur, you need some anger management because somebody's temper just seems to go, you know, they seem perfectly fine. Then something makes them snap, which maybe it's the, this entity that's in them that's constantly just making them snap. And, and so therefore, that's why I was thinking if you're, you're in danger, if this person is a physical person who has a temper that may suddenly start advancing on the, um, the person who's actually trying to help him. Yes, um, I mean, this is why I prefer now to do, I do face-to-face uh, -face sessions as well, but I prefer to do them online because- Ah, yes, that's, you have got, I can see the benefit of that. And it takes a lot out of you, I mean, out of me, I feel. Yes. Because one session that can take up to three, three and a half hours as oh, right. this process. So, and then my responsibility is to help them to fill that void. So you can imagine, Richard, you have been um, suffering from any kind of damaging behavior for a very long time. And all of a sudden you feel light, you mm. feel like something has shifted and changed. And then there is this afterthought so what's happening now? I have identified myself with that trauma for all my life or through that behavior. I keep saying trauma because trauma can be very small, but it can also be very big. It could be, yes. just, for example, a little child walking through the garden and the grandfather says, go and look after the chicken, go and get the eggs. The, ch the child may drop one egg, and that could be a trauma setting her off or him off for the rest of her life, trying to figure out how can I please my yes. parents? So you see where I'm going with this? Yes, no, so, absolutely. I mean, we're so, it, it, I mean, it seems that we're so incredibly vulnerable as, as humans to all sorts of um, problems in, in this world that, as you say, you drop an egg, you realize, oh, mum and dad are not going to be displeased. Maybe they'll get cross with you because they've got their own entities, sort of whatever it is. And so that trauma then starts to escalate and she's trying to desperately please everybody she ever meets and, and, and as, as such has a bit of a miserable life. 
Precisely. And this is where at this point in our reality, it's such a wonderful way, a wonderful time for us to clear all that rubbish. So yes. Let go of everything because our environment, the space around us, the collective consciousness of the planet, of the universe, cosmically, energetically, we are ready to release those patterns that we have carried for such a long time to break free from the chains of our ancestors. So we can actually live a life in true authenticity. Mm. It takes courage. It takes yes. courage to look at the darker sides of our existence. And so would, would this account for, say you've got two people who have the same, tr they're in the same car, and let's say they just have a car accident, which, which scares them, and they come out of the car, but one is perfectly fine at the end of it and has managed to cope without actually losing anything. But the other person is a completely changed instant that neither are hurt any more or worse. You know, it's ex they've just shared the same thing, or they're the they're both the, the the son or daughter, or the offspring of the parents who've died. They both experienced, but one has reacted differently to the other because an entity has got bigger hold than on one than the other. Yeah, just because one person had what could be called a vulnerable spot or an area within their physical body, and this is where physical manifestations come in, like physical symptoms. Let's say, mm. uh, talking about the um, the root, talking about let's say um, lower back, lower back problems. So physical symptoms. A person who has had already lower back problem is already compromised in that particular area and then it needs something like any kind of event that throws us out of sync and out of balance for us to become open and vulnerable for those energetic parasites to actually come in and to feed off that energy and and then that person will be constantly looking to find confirmation of why they should be afraid or right. why they should be um, executing or why they need to execute their power if they have been bullied, for example, or why there is a disappointment um, in love relationships, why their heart always is, why they're always being um, uh, compromised when it comes to love and relationships or throat energy, why they can't express themselves. Right. So, because the deity or those lower dense frequencies have attached themselves to it and prevent us from speaking the truth, talking about the throat. So you can see where this whole understanding of the energies and energy centers come in. And personally, and I'm sharing this, um, I... I didn't really realize the impact of how those energies can affect us until about four years ago. Um, I, I used to work with members of the royal family up until the 2020 mark and there was an incident. I was staying in one of the royal um, households and premises, and I did some work and treatment, and I opened my mouth too much. I said something that I, ha I shouldn't have said. And literally, in during a period of three nights, I was psychically attacked. Were you? And I had no clue up until then how does that really feel if there is a psychic mm. attack? Mm. And it was simply because I I wasn't aware of it and I was just vulnerable at the time and it just sort of happened to happen. So how did that manifest? I had nightmares, dream, as if somebody would come and push a pillow on my face and suffocate me. And it was three nights in a row. I physically felt it and I woke up with my entire right side completely para not paralyzed, but compromised in movement and excruciating pain. So wow. if you think about the right side, it's 
the power center is is your masculine energy is the driving force so basically i was just i couldn't shake it off and it was through a friend of mine that said actually it's very clear what happened here and then i realized actually i need to change i that's when i sort of made a clear cut with some of my high profile clients that I used to have as an Ayurvedic professional and energy worker over many, many years. So this set me onto the path of really understanding energies, understanding wow. entities and frequencies and how they can affect us. And uh, this is where um, I just had to look at another dimension of my way of healing with people, not just teaching them meditation, yoga, or changing their diet or their lifestyle. There's another dimension to our well-being that at, up until that time, I knew it existed, but I didn't really pay attention to how it can affect us. Right. And, that, and <clears throat> so that's fascinating, I have to say. And I, I better not delve too deeply into it because it'll probably shut the channel down. But um, so... Can you do this to yourself? I mean, can you heal? Can you realize you've got this energy wherever it is? If you're perhaps a bit spiritually awake or, or um, aware of yourself, uh, especially if you've had a conversation or somebody's listened to this and gone, actually, do you know what? I thought there was something happening. Can they sit down in self-meditation um, and talk to the entity or communicate with it however you do and send it on its way so thanks ever so much but it's been nice knowing you but we really must we must part um i would say spontaneously yes if it comes to the deeper stuff some of the stuff is actually not quite visible we don't really see what is going on and right. it's always better to have a neutral person look looking in because we can be quite um what's the right word we can be quite um sort of attached to our own way of being and certain things we don't really see so so are you saying that we can be so used to this parasite we think it's part of us and we don't want it to go yeah even though we want it to go as it were exactly and and somebody else as you say a neutral person can see the two conflicting can see the conflict basically but i mean there's definitely some basic um guidelines that i can give number one is constantly clear your energy field if you have been in a space where there are lots of people and if you are a sensitive person if you yeah. pick up energies easily if you feel drained and tired in a crowded place then make sure when you come out of that crowded place that you actually clear your energy field and you are crowding yourself and you're putting a protective shield around you and that can be done within the meditation practice, for example, within your daily um, protocol, what I would call the spiritual hygiene regime. I don't really like the word hygiene, but I can't really find another word so mm. to sort of deal with your own uh, practices that can help you stay in balance and can help you to keep in a higher vibrational frequency as much as possible. So. These are things that you can do for sure. Yes. Oh, okay. And you. So if you come away from a busy thing and you, as you say, you're feeling tired, you just take yourself off quietly, and and you're mentally cleaning yourself, whatever it takes, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So there is um, a practice. Let me see. If I can sort of demonstrate this a little bit. Yeah, I'll put you on the whole screen so that we can see. I wanna go through. So what I would suggest is. You just use one hand and you wipe down one arm. It doesn't matter right or left first. You go one, two, three, four. Go and clear your energy field a couple of times. And then you move across your upper body. Oh, okay. Just a few times. And you move down your back and your legs a couple of times and basically sweeping off those energies. And right. when you do it, you will feel some sense of, ha, ah, that actually feels quite good, you know? Yes. So, I mean, it is, it is, 
you're you're doing it physically and you're also picturing it mentally and so as you as you yes you're sort of cleaning off all the as if as if you just come out from a, a, a very dusty room and you're you're effectively you know it because some of it's mental and some of it's physical presumably yeah then you just brush it off exactly yes yes you it as a way to basically use your hands energetically but also symbolizing so get off my back basically right absolutely and and yeah so well that's a that's a tip that everybody can do um now especially if you if i guess if you've caught yourself doing those things that you don't like yourself to be doing and you as we said at the beginning where you go what the, why did i do that why did i say that oh go away you know as if you're mentally getting rid of the issue and it's also sometimes quite fascinating to see what people vocalize what they speak and in certain situations and then they say oh my gosh where did that come from? I didn't really meant to say it like that. Yes. Because it's like finding a way of feeding off us to be nourished. And basically, as I said, those parasites, they can't exist without the nourishment of light, of high frequency, high density energies. And they come and just sort of latch on to us and have a feast, you know. And if you can keep your your positive mental attitude up if you can stay positive but presumably their effect is a lot less absolutely this is where as soon as we find ways of keeping our own energy up keeping making sure that we are healthy that we are mentally sort of stable that we have some kind of uh i wouldn't like to use the word control but that we are able to become aware of our thoughts mm. that's already a fantastic way of um of keeping certain energetic parasites away but like i said um this has been going on for a very 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 long time we are not just talking hundreds of years thousands of years right it's beginning of humanity since the beginning of where what might be called the fallen angels where we start to uh, figure out how does where, where, where energetic beings are started to control humanity and we carry this through lifetimes through cultures so even we might be in the now moment Richard um, in the now moment you might be able to shake off what goes on in your immediate field but we don't know what has been lurking underneath what you carry from your ancestors unless you become or you allow yourself in a space where that can be explored and yes it, and we don't really realize how much we carry until we are being opened up until our eyes are being opened up to that situation and this form of hypnosis is not um hypnosis that you can imagine with a magician on stage where they just snap their finger yes. and um, you you are knocked off and you can't remember. No, you pretty much go consciously through this process and uh, which in a way is a crucial element of the healing because it is by you realizing that it is a past life scenario that you have carried on for a long time that realization in itself can be healing or is very much a healing moment that mm. you realize actually this is past life. Why do I carry this in the now moment? And then when those parasites leave your body, you feel that energetic void to seal off the auric field. You stabilize your energy and more and more you will be able to notice yourself when you are in a tricky situation where your mind, your thoughts want to push you in a direction that you feel might not be quite as conducive as it may seem, if you know what I mean. Mm. Oh, well, um, <clears throat> so are there many people that do what you do? There are more and more people that do this specific technique, but it is only until I would say the last 10, 15 years, and this particular 
technique that um, I'm talking about is a soul center healing hypnosis technique that has been developed by a person called Laura Whitworth. And over time, because of my own experience, I'm adding, I've added my own spin to the approach because, um, yeah, and to answer your question, not enough people do this work. Right. And there's not enough awareness. People be, are scared of entities. We don't yes. need to be scared. It doesn't mean that we are completely possessed by entities. That takes it on to another level. This is where certain mental diseases actually come in. And we could spend another half an hour just talking about the fact how in a mental institution, our people are being dumbed down and dulled down, where in fact it could be that these are energetic parasites that don't leave the person alone, that push them to certain behaviors rather than dulling them down with medications. There could be another way. So do you think, um, I mean, you mentioned that, that's very interesting. Do you think that the events of um, 2020, where people were made scared by the government and mainstream media, that there was a certain something floating about and we all had to wear nappies on our face, and then there was this thing that was going to rescue us, and I speak ad nauseously about it on the show. Do you think that, that some of that is the, um, the dark entities or these um, parasitical entities are taking advantage of the fear mongering so that people who are going, oh my God, there's this thing and, and I might catch it. And, and, and that is a way for quite a lot of people to have perhaps acted irrationally when a certain cure came in that people weren't thinking about should they or should they not take it? A hundred percent. And this is where also then uh, for people who have taken that decision and gotten that thingy, um, where AI comes in, there's where artificial intelligence and control about AI comes in. And um, in my sessions, I have experienced people that have had implants, like energetic implants through artificial intelligence, which has allowed them to operate almost remotely. And those um, aspects or those energetic AI implants when they are being removed, people become like a new person. And wow. you don't know it. And in the very fact, spending a lot of time on our phones, getting sucked into social media, and I'm feeling guilty here as well, I have to snap myself out of it all the time, you know? Um, mm. When I feel like I'm getting completely sucked into the field of scrolling, the finger movement, um, and this is where we become vulnerable, where our energy, our frequency is dropping, where those AI um, parasites can actually attach themselves to us that can lead to certain behaviors that are not natural to who we yes. are. So, so just to the viewer who happens to be watching right now, when you've come to the end of this video, turn your your machine off don't scroll on endlessly you've seen something really interesting turn it off put it down get outside in the sunshine if there is any um get back to net don't just spend forever you know because it is very easy to add that sort of very habitual thing and then go oh I've just wasted an hour where did that go exactly and I had all this other stuff I wanted to do, but for some reason it was, I got into a hypnotic trance of just, oh, watch a bit of that and watch a bit of that. And before you know it, you've wasted your time. You've not achieved anything. And when you don't achieve anything and you had, you know, even if it's just an ordinary list of ordinary everyday stuff and you don't achieve it, you feel guilty, don't you? You just feel down on yourself and you go, oh, why did I do that again? So it's yeah. very easy for these things to take over. And then for us to give away our power and our control and uh, for giving away the possibility for us to take charge of our life, we are being controlled. And yes, uh, in one of the opening lines of my book, I, I, there's a sentence, do you live life or is life living you? That's the big question, you know. So mm -hmm. how many people life is living them where in fact we could live our life to in extent that we are not susceptible to those energies. 
it doesn't mean richard i'm not saying i'm quite sort of very clear here i'm not saying that we all need to become saints and live in the himalayan mountains and and uh, become all holy no if you use your social media if you use your phone develop an awareness when it becomes addictive when you feel the energy shifts so become actually aggressive if somebody asks you something when you are on mm. the phone and that's when awareness actually comes in and the beauty of this now moment is that we have the possibility of moving through those tainted areas within our energy field clearing them so that we can become a beacon of light and hope for the people around us it doesn't stop with us if we change if we clear those muddy energies and colors within our energy system naturally we become a beacon of light and people realize what's happening here and they start to behave differently they start to think differently without us actually needing to say anything you know yes well that sounds brilliant you mentioned a book what's it, what's your book called my book is called mindful alchemy a five body approach to healing so and um, is, it, is it available on um, all if, the normal places it's just coming out at this moment in time i think two days more and then uh, people can order it online and they can get a copy of the book so just fantastic perfect timing well, the perfect timing um, well i'll leave um if if i'll get the thing from you and then i'll go back and put the link in so if people are watching this and it's not there come back in a few days and then the link to the but i'll put that link in um i'll rely on you tomas to send me the link and then i can stick it in it's been an absolute we've come out run out of time but it's been an absolute um pleasure to talk to you you do pr private practices some people may be interested in contacting you to find out more information do, do you have a website as well Yes, it's a, the website. I'll send it to you on the link. Yes, easier. yes, Give absolutely. So I'll put the link in the also, description. Also, I have got a lot of useful content on my TikTok channel. Uh, very short recipes, simple things, energetic practices to clear your energy field. So if people want to explore that, it's a very quick way to get an idea of the work and how they can help themselves because that's in essence what you do is creating an awareness so people can take decisions for themselves and that's in essence what i do just share some of those tricks and tools that have helped me during the past 35 years to stay sane actually <laughs> yes yes and um, that's what we definitely need we want to stay sane especially in the, in the insane world that we find ourselves so often in um so Tomas, thank you so much for talking to us i'll put all those links in the description and that people can check out the tiktok channel as well your book when it comes out and your website and they can book you if they so wish which um would be good um thank you so much i've really enjoyed it it's been fascinating i'm gonna have to go now and clear myself and make thank make you. sure that there are no evil get out of it <laughs> evil entities flying around um get get a shot of them but no i appreciate i appreciate the time thank and uh, i'm sure a lot of people have got a um, lot of stuff out of that so thank you so much thank you richard for asking me to come on it's very generous of you thank you so much no it's my pleasure and ladies and gentlemen i'll be back with more monologues and more wonderful uh, guests of course but in the meantime take care check out all the links and um I'll be back very soon. So from Tomaz and myself, thanks for watching. Thank Goodbye. You. Thank you.